The History of BBK Electronics, Parent Company of Oppo, OnePlus and Vivo Electronics. Are you familiar with Volkswagen Group? It is an automaker and one of the largest auto giants in the world, who has their best-selling passenger cars as well as has other brands like Audi, Bentley, Bugatti, Lamborghini, Porsche, Skoda and many more. Why I'm giving you an example of an automaker on a story about an electronics company. Well, just like the VW Group, BBK Electronics is a giant group, which holds three brands under its name, technically Apo and Vivo are parts of BBK, while the OnePlus is a wholly owned subsidiary of the Apo. So, why an electronics company have three different brands under its name? How do they come to be in existence? What are their plans with it? We explain all in this story about the BBK Electronics. Apo. Birth. First brand that came into existence was the Apo Electronics. Its major product lineup includes more than just smartphone, it manufactures Blu-ray players and Universal DVD player as well. The company was founded in 2004 and Tony Chen who is the current CEO of the company is listed as the corporation, which is actually a subsidiary of the BBK Electronics. Company entered the mobile phone market in the year of 2008 and just within five years it was reportedly the second most profitable company in China in 2013 among the players like ZTE, Huawei, Lenovo, and Xiaomi. Apo Digital an independently operating division of Apo Electronics was set up in the United States in California, which is known for offering up converting DVD and Blu-ray disc players. The first product that they sold was a Poopt 971H, which was a universal DVD player. Products and growth. The mobile handset that no one might know that a Po produced was R819-R819T. While the handsets that you might have heard falls under Find, N and R series. The N1 was world's first handset that came with a rotating camera that can be used as back or ear and that's when the camera dedicated N series was born in December 2013. After that next year in March, company launched the Find 7A and then Find 7, the later sported the world's first Quad HD, 2560 by 1440 display, which was available in May 2014. Later that year in October, Company announced their design focused smartphone, the R5, which was slimmest smartphone of the year, measuring just 4.9 mm. These series were upgraded in the coming year, and thanks to that, the brand is listed among the top five smartphone brands in the world, replacing the likes of Lenovo and Xiaomi. Considered as the premium smartphone maker, Apo relies on the strong offline retailer network it has created in the home country. The brand started its international expansion in 2010 starting with Thailand, where the brand first announced Find 3 and then later showcased the Find 5, which was followed by the Find 7. In parallel, company expanded its presence in countries like Philippines, Myanmar, Vietnam, Indonesia, Malaysia, India, Bangladesh, Pakistan and many more regions. Company operates locally in these regions catering the needs according to the audience. Apo India Presence Apo officially entered in India on 27 January 2014, and the Find 7 was the first handset that was launched in the country. The brand then moved to launch several handsets including Mirror 3, N1, N1 Mini, Joy, Joy Plus, Near 3, R5, R7 and R7 Lite. Recently, company has launched its new series, the F1 and F1 Plus, they are being touted as the selfie expert phones, the later handset comes with 16 MP front-facing module. The brand has been focused in launching premium quality handsets in the country since its official operations. To move forward with its plans in India, they have dedicated a promise to start manufacturing in India under the Make in India campaign run by the Indian government. As per reports, the brand is going to make 10 lakh 4G phones per month at its upcoming facility in Noida, as told by Mike Wang, CEO of Apo Mobiles India. Company has invested Rs 100 crore for setting up the manufacturing unit. Apo has manufacturing partnership with Foxca in India, Mr Wang confirms that Foxca will be manufacturing phones for them even after their Noida facility starts production. Vivo Products and Growth 
Talking about their product range, it is spread among premium offerings such as X-Series to mid-level offering in the form of V-Series, which is a combination of solid specification and attractive price tag. There is a price-conscious Y-Series to cater the lower end of the spectrum. After announcing X1, company continued their journey of slimmest handsets in the form of Xs, X5, X5 Max and X5 Pro. They also introduced two handsets out of which one was focused in offering the best camera quality company have to offer, goes by name Xshot. The second handset named Xplay 3s that was launched in 2013 was more focused for providing best display as it featured Quad HD screen. Company also has hi-fi technology enabled headphone, XC800 that are intended for Vivo smartphones. The Y51 is the most recent handset launched in December 2015 in their lower end segment, but is still loaded with smart software fun touch OS and a host of features such as smart wake, smart beauty mode, and smart click. In their V-series, apart from the popular V1 and V1 Max, the brand has recently upgraded the series with V3 and V3 Max, which is launched in the home as well as international markets as well. Like Apo, Viva has expanded into various countries like India, Malaysia, Indonesia, Thailand, Myanmar, Vietnam, and Philippines. The International Path, which was started in 2011, now has seen company certified for operations in over 100 countries. According to company's website, they have sold over 25 million in China, which was in 2014, while the growth was at 45 million worldwide sales in 2015. With an average retail price of $300, which might be huge than most of the Chinese companies with an international presence. As you know, Vivo recently breaks into the world's top 5 smartphone brands list, as they have registered more than 150% growth in sales. OnePlus products and growth. Talking about the products, the first handset, OnePlus One, was launched by the company on April 23, 2014, just a couple of months after the company was formed. It aggressive pricing and groundbreaking specifications, the company also introduced first its kind invite system to purchase their first handset. It received a lot of heat from the smartphone consumers who wanted to buy their handsets but couldn't because of the invite system. With the further launch of products the invite system was improved, and in some countries the devices has been made invite-free. Later, the company announced the successor, which was dubbed as flagship killer of 2016, the OnePlus 2, unveiled in July 2015 in their home country while the international release was in August 2015. The company claimed that their handset is so good that it can compete with the devices that are stated for launch in 2016. Carl Pei, the co-founder seemed more amused by the first 5-inch device which they unveiled on October 29, 2015. The international release of OnePlus X happened on 5 November 2015. As per the annual report card of 2014 posted by company, they have earned over $300 million revenue in that year. The company didn't specify how many handsets they have actually sold, but it has been speculated by reports popping up on internet that number comes up to 1 million. The top regions accounting their sales include East Asia and Europe as they amounted for 39% and 32% sales of their device in 2014. The brand hasn't posted anything recently about the sales figures of OnePlus 2 and OnePlus X which is why, there are rumors that company has fallen short of their targets for 2015, despite selling out all units in the first batch. OnePlus India Presence OnePlus stepped into India officially in December 2014, which is when the company started selling the OnePlus One in the country via Amazon. Now the 2014 smartphone is also available on Flipkart, another online retailing website in India. Indian audience were among few to enjoy the early availability of new OnePlus products. And that's what we hope Vika Zagal, general manager of OnePlus India would want to keep active for the upcoming smartphones, as OnePlus 3 is in the making for this year. In terms of the sales India has contributed a lot, while for the first year, the brand has missed their target of selling 1 million smartphones. That's not necessarily a bad thing as the company is still young and has a long way to go to capture more Indian audience. 
unlike its parent company, Apo and sibling company, since it's a part of BBK Electronics, Vivo, they don't have any plans to set up manufacturing plans to make phones in India as of now. But when in future the sales figures grow double digits millions, it can be expected that the young Chinese mobile company would express their interest in making India campaign. IMU. BBK Electronics, which is practically the largest mobile electronics group has done it again. There is a new brand in town named IMU, which has launched their first handset get sporting model number M1000. It is the first of its kind education focused phone. This brand was first announced by the Chinese group in June this year. Solely established to create educational content based smartphones, the M1000 comes with free education content from 1st to 12th standard, that is primary to high school. It offers a video catalog of 120,000 videos, which can be streamed online. The brand has also tied up with 300 teachers that will help students with their problems regarding academics. Coming to the talk of why IMU wants to see a smartphone in hands of each student in China. Well, it is quite simple. The brand is looking to revolutionize the way students learn. While current generation might be aware of the facts how the mobile technology can change the way we learn, the implementation for that hasn't done by any company at such level where BBK has separately set up a new smartphone brand for its education-focused smartphones business. The device is said to be powered by a custom OS named Study OS, which is based on Android 6.0 Marshmallow, which is the latest stable OS at the time of covering this post. Let's briefly explore the specifications of the device. The M1000 smartphone from IMU packs a laser sensor that is specifically designed to scan mathematic equations as well as would help in solving the content as well. You can also expect language translation services too. Since the device is designed for educational consumption, the parents can lock the entertainment apps when they feel to. The hardware specs of the device are pretty standard, it has a 5.5-inch AMOLED 1080p display, 3GB of RAM, 32GB of internal storage and Helios P10 chipset at its core. You get 13MP rear camera and a 5MP front camera. It is powered by a 2930mAh capacity battery. As far as the availability is concerned, the company is going to stick with its home country, that is China. We don't expect the BBK Electronics to bring this overseas, even if they do, it won't be anytime soon. Fsun Mobile Birth Fsun, a mobile manufacturing company, which is registered as Shenzhen Fsun Communication Technology Company Limited was founded in 2011 Xue Ying Zhang, who is the chairman and current owner of the company. Among the key people is the recent Hyun Kalekesh, which according to his bait profile states that he joined the company in February 2015 as the CEO. Currently, company employs around 600 people. In its early days the brand started its business with the wholesale distribution of electronic parts and communication equipment. Those were the days when smartphone industry was still in the early stage of growth even in developed countries. The private firm then went to get itself registered globally in the year of 2013. Apart from having a headquarter in Guangdong, China, the company started a regional headquarters head office in Business Bay, Dubai. In 2015, ULLC was set up under the name of Fsun Electronics Trading, which looks out the operation in UAE and other Gulf countries like Bahrain, Qatar, Oman, Kuwait, and Saudi Arabia. The company has presence in African countries like Egypt, Kenya, Sudan, and Nigeria. The regional headquarters in Dubai was set up due to high demand of their products in all Gulf Persian countries. The company has a software design team. R&D facilities and multiple manufacturing units set up all across the regions where they are operating. They go by brand name Fsun Mobility in Dubai and the brand has already received VAR award in May 2015, which is given for the fastest growing smartphone brand in the UAE. The brand mostly sales its smartphone in Gulf countries with partnership with electronic retail stores and hypermarkets. Though, it was recently that company launched their e-commerce store named as fsunolinek.com in 2016. The brand aims to create a large online presence of the brand in UAE as the online portal will currently ship products to the UAE region only. 
FSN products and growth. FSN reportedly entered into the smartphone business in 2011, but didn't have a smartphone until two years later, when they announced V6 and i5. These two handsets were released in the month of January and February during the year 2013. They sported decent set of specification considering the technology at that time in the market. That year they only had two smartphones on sale, but next year their number was increased to 13. They have handsets in series named H, V, D and L. These four series consisted the handsets ranged from entry level specs to mid and higher. Though, during their operations in 2014, they had only one model with flagship specification, it was Fsun H9, which sported the full HD display, 2GB of RAM and had 13MP rear module accompanied by a 5MP module on front. Later, next year in early 2015, company announced a large screen variant called H9 Furious. It was the year of Fablet, the large screen-sized smartphones. In the same year, company announced 11 other handsets, but they weren't the iterative of the series of handsets launched a year before that. Instead company seems to shift its focus on launching completely new handsets. In 2015, Fsun launched 6 of those total 12 models at Gitex, Dubai, which kick-started the regional expansion in Saudi Arabia and Egypt. During their keynote at exhibition, company also announced their expansion plans to reach across the MENA regions. This year company has so far launched three handsets, Illusion, Race and V-Touch. Out of these three models, two were launched at Gitex Spring Exhibition 2016. The Illusion is a 6-inch fablet offering from company that is priced around $250, while the $200 race sports a 5-inch IPS curve display. The main attraction in these two handsets said to be that they are 360-degree VR compatible with company's VR headset. Yes, the brand has forayed into the virtual reality business, but offers only VR compatible with their two handsets. Later, company launched VTouch in April this year and has been available in the UAE since May 2016. It is company's first fingerprint sensor smartphone that offers intelligent control of the biometric sensor. Company touts that its fingerprint sensor is LED enabled, which will allow to measure hear rate as well. Moreover, with multiple fingerprint app navigation you can use different fingerprints to navigate directly to different apps from lock screen. Isn't that amazing? They are also planning to launch a 3G slash 4G enabled tablets in the market and smartphones accessories in the coming months. They have a dedicated Sun Innovation Labs doing all the research and development for the company. The Vlabs will dedicate their time in developing the virtual reality content ranging from videos, games and 360 degree animations, as they plan to push content to FSUN customers' smartphones. FSUN India Presence FSUN Mobile Private Limited, according to Zorba is a privately held company and is reportedly registered at Rigsatra of Companies, Delhi. The date of corporation is 10th of September 2015, making its operation in India less than a year old. The listing states that it is involved in manufacturing electrical equipment. Thus, giving a little benefit of doubt that whether the claim of having a manufacturing unit is true or false. Though, it is little hard to digest that a brand, which is hardly known in India has set up a largest factory unit for manufacturing smartphones. It is reported to have 40 assembly lines in the 10 acre of land, which is quite a huge deal. The manufacturing unit has a capacity of producing 40 million devices a year. Sun's operations in India are handled by Yao Jinji, Pardeep Jain, and Ashish Agarwal, who are the directors in the company. As of now, company hasn't shared any detail whether they plan to sell their smartphones in India. Moreover, there is currently no India dedicated website from the brand where its information can be accessed. We make wearables too, XTC. You might have been reading that wearables market is on the rise since these past couples of years, thanks to companies like Fitbit, Apple, and Samsung, who are the top promoters of all things wearables, this arena is also seeing tremendous growth. While it has been considered that Samsung would be in the top 5 wearables vendors, but did anybody thought they would be sharing a spot? Well, we didn't at least. 
The South Korean giant is sharing a fifth spot with BBK Electronics in the recently released quarterly shipments by IDC, International Data Corporation, which is a market researcher. According to IDC, the total shipment volumes reached to 19.7 million units in Q1 2016 compared to 11.8 million units in Q1 2015, which is a huge jump of 67.2%. What could have caused that kind of jump in the shipments? Well, there is no clear answer but in revolves around post-holiday price reduction of multiple popular wearables such as Apple Watch. While there is a certain kid's watch, that can be used as a phone to contact the parents. It turns out BBK Electronics, who has three smartphones, is also invested wearables market. The company's smartwatch for kids, XTC Y01, which is priced at 780 yuan, approximately $125, has seen more than 700,000 units sale in the home country. As the wearables market grows, China is among the largest contributors to the sales of wearables, as the country has one of the highest wearables consumers. Thus, cashing in the latest trend, the BBK Corporation decided to introduce incredibly resourceful smartwatch for kids. While they're not as popular as another Chinese firm, Xiaomi, which has Mi Band to thank for their third spot in the list, as the company has sold around 3.7 million fitness trackers, 